Hello, Blizzard fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another Daily Blizzard upload. This is a game between innovation and life on Foxtrot Labs, the latter edition. Now, this is from the Round of Eight series, from the GSL, uh, the most recent GSL, as part of the WCS 2015 Season 1. And uh, we're going to pull up player names, because I've been forgetting to do that lately. And speed things up just a little bit. In the top left of Foxtrot Labs, we have the Red Terran player, Innovation. Now, Innovation comes from the clan SK Telecom. He is a South Korean Terran player. He's one of my favorite players. He was really, really popular in Wings of Liberty. He has kept it up all through Heart of the Swarm. And uh, his recent accomplish accomplishments include taking first place at the 2014 Global StarCraft II League Season 3. Back in October of last year, he went f uh, basically uh, managed to go 4-2 uh, in the final round and got a winnings of $66,000. He also went ahead and took first place in 2013 WCS Season 1. And just a really, really solid Terran player all around. His uh, TVZ is very, very good as well. In the bottom right, we have our Zerg player, the Purple Zerg Life. Now, Life is currently on KT Rolster. He recently took first place in the uh, Global StarCraft II League Season 1, which was held back in March of this year, going 4-3 to three in a series against Parting. And okay, here actually comes the Reaper. Manages to get in. A bunker coming up from Innovation as well. The Reaper is pretty much undefended, pulling drones to deal with this Reaper. The uh, pool is not quite finished yet. It looks like life did go for hatchery first. Very, very dangerous. Innovation getting a bunker up. If that bunker comes up, that's going to be a huge problem for life. He's getting a queen out, he is getting lings out, he's trying to keep these drones alive as much as possible. Basically making that one into an extractor to keep it alive just long enough that it can survive this onslaught. Good micro from Terran players who are using uh, Reapers effectively is very, very difficult to deal with. We are now see some slow lings coming out trying to deal with these guys, but again there is a bunker. They can hop in that bunker anytime they want and be just fine. And here we go, now we actually have a spine crawler coming up. The queen's just about to pop out, that will help a lot. The Reaper's taking a lot of damage, but uh, Innovation not interested in actually putting him in that bunker quite yet. He might actually lose that Reaper if he's not careful. Queen finally out. Might get some shots on, on that wounded Reaper. Another Reaper coming in, and there they go. They're sitting inside that bunker. They are very happy and safe to stay in there. This spine crawler is their worst enemy, though, because he can outrange them inside that bunker. Reapers do not do much damage to buildings either, so it could be very, very dangerous for them once that spine crawler finishes and there it is i think we're gonna uproot it move it a little bit closer to that bunker and yes we do it is basically in range of that reaper but again it does so little damage you'll notice it going down uh actually not at all at this point because the lings and the queen and the uh, spine crawler all work together to take down this bunker forcing it to just be destroyed before it can cancel and life holds that off i mean it wasn't uh super pretty that 15 hatch really hurt him which again is generally safe in ZVT, but in the end it actually did cause quite a bit of damage. If we look, he did lose uh, two drones and 13 uh, speedlings, or 13 lings. He does not want to lose that many lings at this point in the game because those could be drones. You'll notice that he is uh, at a 23 to 20 lead there. I mean, Innovation had to cut workers to make that harassment work. But in the end, is a little bit closer than life would like it to be at this point. So, we do have a starport coming up. It is a bit of a 1-1-1 build with a command center thrown in there as well. And another command center. Alright, Innovation says, I did not kill life with that Reaper attack harassment. But I'm going to go ahead and double expand on the back of that. And hope that life has to basically drone up and cannot attack me for the next few minutes. Although, the Scouting Overlord sees both of these. If we take a look at his vision. Yeah, he... Uh, there we go. He did manage... To see both of those command centers, he knows what's up. Another attack coming in. Uh, was that a Reaper there? If we took a look at units lost. Uh, no. I don't know what that was. Either way, uh, Ling's taking down the rocks to take a third down here. It's a good place to take a third on this map. Very, very close to your natural. As a Zerg player, you want your bases to be as close as humanly possible because queens are slow. And in creep spread is easier if they're closer as well. We do have the creep tuber coming out. Gonna try to extend that creep out. It is a fairly large map. It'll take a while to get out there. I'd like to see another creep tumor here to help 
with that, the spine crawler moving up as well to deal with any harassment that is going to come from innovation. And it, there is going to be some more harassment because there are Hellions out. There is a, a Reaper out as well. What else do we have going on? More and more Reapers. A medevac, we might see a drop into the main here in just a couple seconds from the Terran player. There, the Viking did manage to find the Overlord. The Viking's entire purpose in life was to get out there and find that scouting Overlord and take it down. So here we go. Overlord is so slow and will not uh, be able to find a place to hide because there is no place to hide. Third pace now coming down for life. He said, all right, if you're going to go three command center this early innovation, I'm going to match you with three hatcheries of my own. I would not be surprised to see him take a fourth as well, unless he really wants to try to punish innovation for this early macro play. He's getting two evolution chambers. He is not upgrading to Alaric quite yet. He is getting Metabolic Boost. I don't actually see a Baneling Nest coming up either. So maybe nothing of a bust coming down. Here comes the Viking trying to get in here and actually kill some Overlords. A little bit more difficult to do when there's a Queen on the ground. And yeah, the Queen actually is ready for this. Gets perfectly into position to intercept the Viking if he chooses to fly over into this area. But actually chooses not to. Just kind of hanging out, waiting for a Scouting Overlord to come on by. Here comes a Zergling checking things out. He sees all of the Hellions. He sees the Great Wall of Supply Depots coming up here. And he decides to get the heck out of there. So, both players just kind of sitting back, relaxing. We are getting plus one attack and a plus one carapace for the Zerg player. And it looks like Innovation getting Stim, getting Marines, getting Banshees. And, and it is a bit of a combination. The Queen trying to take down this Viking before he manages to kill an Overlord. And actually does so. I don't know if that was effect effective or not. Widowmine drop here. Widowmine coming on down. Are there any Overseers? No, there are not, but I think the Spore Crawler will finish before the Widowmine is ready to fire again. How many kills does this guy have? Oh, one kill. All right, so not super effective, but here comes the push with the Hellions, with the Reaper, trying to take down this Queen, and they do manage to roast the Queen, and they get the Creep Tumor as well. They're coming right on in, right onto the Creep. We need a lot of Lings to deal with this, or Spine Crawlers, or something. The Lings trying to get a surround. They are very, very fast on Creep. They almost get the surround, but they do not. They're forced to pull back. So many Lings getting roasted in the process, but a Hellion does go down. Lings getting right up in there. They recognize there's fire. They do not care. And another queen gets roasted by these Hellions. Oh boy. Here comes the Banshee as well. A, ban a Banshee. Hellion harassment can be very difficult for the Zerg player because the Banshee does very, very well against ground units. And the Hellions do well against the uh, ground units as well. And there's really nothing in the air that Zerg can have at this point. Mutalisks are probably a long way off. A Bailing Nest is being built now, though. And the uh, combat shield plus one, plus one coming down for the infantry unit. So we're not going to see mech here. We are actually going to see... Uh, the bio play from the Terran player, which is more standard these days in TVZ. And actually, the third base did take the gold here, starting to get saturated. So that's actually a nice pickup. Fourth base coming down for life as well. The plus one, plus one, just about to finish for life for his ground units. He's getting speed on those banelings. He's planning on using those very soon. And that he's also getting a spire. So we're looking at a mutaling baneling attack here or defense, whatever it needs to be from life. The Zergling's trying to catch these Hellions unawares, and he almost catches them. He does manage to snipe one of them down, but he'd like to get more than that. The Zerglings are forced to retreat with all these Marines here as well. They did get a good scout off. Uh, oh no, doesn't actually know there's a base here. I thought they would have been able to see, but they might have taken a different route. So, all right. So life does not know that the gold has been taken by innovation. That's kind of a big deal. A plus one weapons and plus one armor for infantry is just about to finish for innovation. He's pushing out with Marines, with medevacs, and we'll have to see what damage he can do. I don't know if this is enough Marines to really do much. There are going to be Banelings with speed. It looks like they're going to come onto the creep as well, which just gives those Banelings an extra speed bonus. Here come the Lings, and okay, steps onto the creep. Life knows exactly what is going on here, and just trying to get in good position, wrapping around with the Lings to try to allow the Banelings to crush onto those Marines, but no. The medevacs pick it up, back of the heck out, the sport crawler chases them away, and that drop is going to come back at another time, but not for a bit. The Great Wall of Supply Depots happens here as well. It looks like Innovation is worried about a run-by here across this way down this ramp and into that mineral line. It is hard to defend for him. Uh, a little bit out of the way, and uh, actually a cleaning bot. That's very cute. A little bit of a doodad. Uh, wandering a critter, wandering around the map as well. Keeping things nice and shiny clean for these matches. Very, very excellent of him. It looks like the creep spread is okay. I mean, I guess innovation or life did lose a couple creep tumors here early on. Small attack here with Marines uh, being forced to pick up again. There are mutalisks, there are zerglings, there are banelings here. That is not enough for these Marines to handle that. But now they have hellbats, now they have widow mines. 
They're going to be in a better spot to deal with this composition from the Zerg player. Hellbats just do such a great job against Lings. Widowmines can explode Banelings if possible, and Marines do an excellent job against Mutalisks. So good composition from both players. It's going to be a very close back-and-forth match. The Mutalisks trying to come on in, see what they can do, and has he seen that base yet? No, he still doesn't know there's a base there. The Mutalisks get chased off. I can't believe how long Innovation has gotten away with this base with no defense, basically. There's a single bunker, but no missile turrets in here at all. The Mutalisks could have a field day. But it looks like Innovation wants to keep the pressure on the Zerg player. And that way, he uh, will be able to do a ton of damage that way and keep the Mutalisks out of his own base if they're forced to defend. It is currently 193 to 185 supply. Oh, and actually, Innovation just maxed out at a 15-minute mark. Huge play by him. Here comes the push with the Hell the uh, Hellbats and the Marines. The Zerglings flooding on in. The Banelings flooding in as well. This push does get destroyed. Reinforcements flowing in, though. Getting taken down by Banelings. The Mutalisks trying to focus down the ground units. They can take care of the Medivacs later. More and more Banelings crashing in. A Marauder going down to the Lings as well. But more and more Zerglings do manage to come in. The Zing Zerglings split it around left and right side. The Marines are pretty much holding their ground. They have the Medivacs. There are enough Mutalisks here to deal with this. So that is a huge, huge benefit for life. The Widow Mines do manage to burrow. And they do waste themselves on a meaningless Zergling. Well played there by life just amazing micro coming on in they want to take down this base as soon as possible it's been mined for a while though i don't know if it matters really too much it's just about mined out here we are morphing in more and more banelings the mutalisks on top of these marines as well being forced to back out because the banelings are not done yet there they are getting kited very expertly though by innovation and it looks like a couple marines die but not enough and I think the Mutalisks are going to try to get some token kills here. Wait for these Zerglings to come in at the same time. Morphing in more and more Banelings life. Really, really keeping the pressure on right now. It's 180 to 135 supply. The gold base is still up and running though for innovation. He has a lot of mules there. That means his income has got to be through the roof. Uh, but it looks like the Zerg players is actually better with that 4 base. The Zerglings getting right up to the front line. The Mutalisks doing tons and tons of damage. The Banelings rolling in. Trying to kill these Marines. Uh, managed to get a single 2-3 kills there. Not quite enough, though. Widowmine shot goes off again on these uh, Mutalisks. They're forced to retreat just a little bit. They're going to sit here and regenerate. They do have that rapid regeneration uh, that basically allows them to gain health rapidly if they're out of combat for a little bit. And I don't know if they're out of combat long enough there, but either way, Zerglings come in. Mutalisks on top of everything, doing tons and tons of damage. A big Baneling hit there. Overseers here as well to deal with those Widowmines. And a push up the front with the Zerglings, with the Mutalisks. A small group of Zerglings comes over here to deal with that mineral line. And no, more reinforcing Marines. They are at this point 2-2. Two, 3-3 two. Three, three not being researched quite yet. If life can keep innovation on 2-2 two, two for a long time, that'll be good for him. Finally, the harassment gets cleaned up in this mineral line as well. The Mutalisks are interested in going in there. A Baneling gets destroyed on that ramp. Good kiting. More and more attacks along this side. We're going to zoom back on out. These Mutalisks have stayed alive forever. I cannot believe how effective they've been in this particular match. Although, at this point, I think their numbers are dwindling. The Mutalisks do manage to take down... Oh, two Medivac... Oh, one Medivac that still has one hit point. And another Medivac goes down there. More and more Marines flooding on in. The Zerglings coming in as well. Life not giving up the pressure whatsoever. But the Mutalisks are finally forced to retreat. I cannot believe that Medivac is still alive with a single hit point. I think if Life had seen that, he would want to snipe it down. But either way, woo, let's take a breath there. That was a really intense engagement for a good long time. We do actually uh, have these mineral patches being mined out. And what else is going on here? Mutalisks flying on across the right side to the left side. Overlord coming in. Probably wants to poop creep somewhere. Mutalisks interested in taking out this base. Again, I don't know if it's entirely worth the damage to your Muta flock. Just because there's nothing left here. It's been mining for so long that killing stuff... I mean, killing workers is always nice, but it's not like the income from this base was too much at all anyway. We almost 700 minerals left, and that is it. There's only one worker on gas anyway. I imagine the Mutaflock would be able to do better elsewhere. It is still effectively 4 base, though. This 4th base just coming up for Innovation. It is way oversaturated, though. 35 to 24. A push coming out now from Innovation. Does he have that 3 upgrade yet? No, he's interested in staying at 2-2, two, two, it looks like. We are upgrading the Flyer attacks, though, for the Mutas. Getting a plus 2 there. That's going to be huge. Mutas, again, focusing on this gold base. I don't know why. 
but it is 186 to 154, 155 supply. It's 54 to 80 harvesters. 80 is a good place to be for the Zerg player. You want to have that to keep up your continual production. And here we go. Mutalisks or Zerglings coming in first. Banelings crashing in as well. Mutalisks coming in on top of everything. It is just a good combination. And these medevacs are in big trouble. All of them go down. Huge pickup there for life. Dropping changelings as well. Overseer actually dies. The more and more, more banelings running on in. Crashing into the Marines as best they can. Killing supply depots. Another medevac going down to these mutalisks. I mean, how many medevacs are left? There are only two left on the map. Mutas, lings, banelings, small group coming in. They're going to go ahead and try to take out this fourth base. If the baneling hits are good, no. Good stim back. Good split there by innovation. Keeping his Marines alive. It's 14, 15 workers going down, though. It is now 39 to 80 harvesters. Life is basically doubling or more than doubling the Terran player and innovation knows it too. He calls the GG and that is it. Woo! What an amazing TVZ. And that was only game one from their series. I'm going to go ahead and cast the entire series here. I love both of these players. I really like TVZ. I like how they both play it. It's going to be action packed. So stay with me as I do this entire series over the course of the next couple of days. Anyway, this has been Falcon Paladin with yet another Daily Blizzard upload. This is, uh, again, has been a game between innovation and life. If you liked what you heard today, if you liked what you saw, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe on YouTube. You can also find me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook to support me that way. Get the awareness out that I am here making those videos. Let StarCraft II fans know there is good content out there on YouTube. And then not everybody has abandoned them. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, you take care of yourself.